Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live NinjaTrader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed. My name is Jim Cagvina with Ninja Trader. It is Monday, July 24th, 2023. Appreciate everybody uh, being here with me today. Joining me live in the chat is also a very important VIP. His name is Ed Jerkin. Ed has uh, been with Ninja Trader a long period of time, and he could answer any questions whatsoever. Uh, if you want to post some in the chat. So feel free to do it. If you're not in the chat and you want to be in the chat, go to ninjatrader.com forward slash learn. And then that URL will take you right there. Ninjatrader.com forward slash learn. I think that takes, or no, uh, you know what? I'll give you a better, I'll give you a better one. Ninja, uh, even a better one than the learn one. Ninjatrader.com forward slash events. You don't have to log into anything. Uh, just add that word events to the end of the ninjatrader.com URL and you will, uh, be able to uh, roam about the cabin, so to speak. So today we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about mostly uh, OCO orders and AT the ATM feature in the Ninja Trader platform, um, and do some uh, automated uh, trading uh, ideas. Uh, it's there's a, there's many different options. It's very feature rich, and we're going to go ahead and uh, dive into it. I'm going to do most of the most of the demonstrations on a trading ladder on a dome. You could also do the exact same thing what I'm doing on a chart as well. Um, it's easy if you get go ahead and go to the uh, if you have a chart up, uh, hit the uh, egg beater on the top of the menu. It looks like one of those old fashioned egg beaters, and then um, add chart trader. It, it, you could do hidden, but you want to be you want to show it chart trader. So it'll it'll add this panel to the side of your chart, uh, which is a control panel to place trades. And you'll see um, we have a thing called ATM strategy here on the right hand side. It doesn't look like a lot, right? You're like, oh, okay, well it's just one drop down menu. But no, 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 it does an awful lot of stuff. I'm going to show you how to use this, um, and then you know you can get into it with the drop down menu and, and save things and add things and all that stuff. Um, the other thing that I want to point out while we're looking at the uh, chart trader is the ability to right click in the white space here, you right click in the right space, and then you'll have some options. One of them is OCO order. Okay, we're going to get into that, but I'm going to get into it on the trading ladder. It works the same way. So I'm going to pull over a trading ladder right here, right here, right here, right now. So a lot of these trades are called OCOs, and OCO stands, it depends on how old you are, but OCO stands for order cancels other. Right, and things are going to follow. So here's a trading ladder, um, and I have ATM strategy set at none for starters. Right, I don't have any strategies whatsoever. I'm going to right click, and I don't have OCO uh, uh, checked either. Now you can trade uh, straight from the trading ladder. This is the E-mini S&P, and please, as I go through these, uh, the functionality of the ATMs, um, these are these are just random trades I'm putting on. Don't follow along thinking, oh, these are really good trades. Jim's going to make some great trades. No, no, I'm just going to use the ladder as an example. I don't even, I'm not even really looking at a chart. So keep that in mind uh, if you're following along. So the first, it, to trade, just to give you a basic, right? You could do a market order here on the trading ladder. There's a buy market. There's a sell market button on the upper left. And if you want to be precise and you want to place a limit order, uh, and any specific price in the marketplace, you could do it. So I'm going to do that right now. And you can see the last traded price is that yellow label right there that's moving around. That yellow label is moving around right now. That's mark to market. That's where the price, that's where the market's moving right now. So 45.87 even, and it's bouncing around because markets are static. They don't stay at one price. So let's say I wanted to put a limit order in to buy a contract 
if the market comes down to 45.86 even, I'm just gonna move my mouse to the buy column here and I'm gonna click once. It's gonna send an order from my platform through NinjaTrader, if this were a live account to the actual exchange, in this case, the CME group. I'm trading in a, in a real-time simulated uh, environment right now. So it's we're, we have a, we, we created our own exchange. It's a fake exchange, but it does use real-time data. So it's very handy to practice some of these ATMs. So now, um, right now I click once, right? And I had one contract selected in my quantity box up there. Uh, I just had one, I had my account uh, name up there. I have a couple of different SIM accounts, but SIM keg, SIMI is what we're talking about right now. And if the market comes down to my price, and I get to the front of the line, I'm going to get filled, which I just did. So I literally just uh, bought a contract at 45.86 in my SIM account. And um, you can see it's highlighted by that gray box right there, right? It's, it's my position. Now the market's going up in my, my favor. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna put a profit target in and I wanna put a stop loss in, right? Those are, that's, that, those are the three pillars or three components of a trade. So what I'm gonna do in this case though, is instead of just putting them in, Manually, I'm going to put them in manually, but I'm going to associate them together, right? So I'm going to right click and I'm going to see this drop down menu here. It says OCO order. I'm going to click on that and it's going to activate the OCO functionality. You can see up on the upper right hand side here of the trading ladder, this Ninja Trader Superdome, we have a green OCO highlighted up there. That's how you know you got an OCO going. So let's say if this thing goes up, I don't know, let's call it uh, eight ticks. I would like to, uh, that'd be my profit target. And then if it goes down, I don't know, four, six ticks, it will be my stop. And I'm going to use my middle mouse key to put my stop in. Um, it'll be a sell stop. So now I have the market surrounded. We call it bracketing the market. So this is a simple bracket around the market. And the idea now is if my profit target gets hit at 45.88, then my stop loss will automatically be canceled. Now, which, which, which means I would have a flat position and nothing else working in the order book, right, for this particular market. Alternatively, if the market goes against me and I get stopped out, then my profit target will, will, will get canceled automatically, right? So my hands are off the mouse. I'm just kind of waiting. Now, why would someone do this instead of just manually click and go? A couple of reasons, uh, really. The main reason is um, not to forget about an order that's not fulfilled later on, right? So right now we have the perfect anatomy of a trade, I'm long. I, my opinion is the market's going to go up. I want to try to get uh, try to get that profit target hit. Alternatively, if it goes against me, I don't want it to go against me forever, so I have my stop loss in, right? And so now what I've done is I've automated that process by after at, this is after the fact. Now this is after I put the trade on. We could do the same thing before we put the trade on, but I thought we'd start with this and uh, see how it goes. Now the other thing that's very important is with that OCO on. I could modify my orders if I want. I mean, I could just make this lower by just clicking and clicking. And I just canceled and replaced my order. And the beauty of it is the OCO, the order cancels order functionality and instructions are still good, right? They're still rolling. Everything is still uh, in play right now. I don't have to worry about canceling that functionality out as well. I could do the same thing. I could just click and click and just cancel and replace an order on my stop on the downside. To a different side as well. It's really that easy. And I'm going to keep doing it so we can get something could happen so I could see uh, how, to, how, how this functionality works. Proof is in the pudding. I know it's kind of like, uh, you know, you do these demonstrations and nothing ever happens. It's like, all right, the market's not moving. For some of the more complicated stuff, we'll shoot to the micro NASDAQ because that thing moves. So a couple more ticks here on the upside. Let's see if we can get a fill at 86.75. And, uh, you know, it's tricky though. The simulator tries to simulate being in line, right? It's first in, first out at the CME group. And so the behavior you just saw where the price hits our, hits our limit order, you don't get filled immediately. You won't get filled immediately. You're in line behind a bunch of other contracts that other traders put there ahead of you. So that's a, that's a phenomenon you gotta remember. Now the stop on the other hand is gonna, is gonna tr get triggered immediately. It's gonna act like a market order. I'll go ahead and tighten that up a little bit so we could uh, get to the next uh, next idea here in a second. And you can see it's we're just kind of going sideways. It's the middle of the day and we'll definitely do a micro NASDAQ next. It should speed things up. I'm going to trail my stop to break even right now. And uh, well, when I say break even from a gross P&L point of view, of course. So you got, uh, let's see if we have any slippage on stop uh, on market orders, which stop is going to behave like that. You could have that as well. All right.
So stopped out. The profit target automatically canceled. I'm flat. I have nothing going. You can see there's nothing on this, nothing here. There's nothing under my sleeve. It's all, it's all good to go. Now, that was on a, a order to get long, right? So I could do the same thing if I wanted to go short. I would just kind of sell an order. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to turn it off again. Turn it off, OCO, and then go ahead and sell an order. Okay. And once we get filled, right click, turn that OCO back on. And then first, I want my profit target. I have two units here. I was over exuberant on my clicks. Um, so I'm going to change my quantity to two. And my profit target, though, again, for a short position is below, right? I want to buy it back at a lower price. I think the market's going to go down. I want to buy it back at a lower price. So I'll click on my price. And then on the stop, it's going to be above. The buy stop's going to be above the market in this condition when I'm short. So I'm going to use the wheel of my mouse to put it in. So now I just did the exact same opposite trade. I put everything in backward and it's still going to work as advertised. I'll go ahead and move this down to uh, break even and we'll see if we can get out of this really, really quickly. Um, so this is called, again, a simple bracket. Order cancels other. So this order is going to cancel that or this order is going to cancel that, depending on which gets filled first. So it's pretty handy, especially if you're walking away from the screen for a second. Right. I mean, you don't you're not too worried about a double fill. So in double fill, just to kind of show you what that would be, is if let's say I'm long here, and again, I, left, I had to default it at two, and then my target, my profit target is up here, and, and my stop is down here. Now, oops, I'm sorry, my stop is down here. So if the market goes up to my, my, my limit order uh, on, a, on a long position, let me just do, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy one at the market then uh, I, I could be flat up here, but later on in the day, the market could break down and this stop is still working in the books because I don't have an OCO associated with it, right? So that's why it's kind of handy, especially if you're going to walk away, if, if you're going to look at another market or you're going to forget about something. Make sense? I'm just going to close this up all together, hit the close button and we are flat. All right, so there's more. So let, let's do the same thing, only this time we would like to uh, instead of adding the OCO after the fact, right? I want to make it a strategy. Let's make it a strategy. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go ahead to uh, the drop down menu and I'm going to hit custom, right? I'm going to hit custom and it's going to give me this dialog box. Now, this dialog box doesn't look like much, but believe me, it's a lot. So I'm going to do a one unit trade. So my order quantity is one. And then my stop loss will, again, this is random, folks. Don't follow, follow along at, at home is four, I'll set my profit to four, okay? Only one target, only one contract, four, four tick stop loss, four tick profit target, no stop strategy yet, no stop strategy yet. I'm gonna hit okay. And you'll see a little eye button popped up there, custom. I got a custom thing going on. So now if I wanna get into a market, I could do a market order, I could do a stop, I could do a limit order. It doesn't matter the type of market, I, uh, type of order that I use, but once I do, once I get into a position, now uh, that automatically kicked in that OCO. And so, how is this handy? Well, let me give you a better example. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, again cancel, cancel. Notice the the length all the way across, knowing that you're in that custom uh, ATM. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it differently. I'm going to come down to 84, uh, 45, 84, and I'm going to throw a limit in, and I'm going to wait. Right. Now, maybe I, maybe I need to run away from the desk for a second or, you know, get a little bit more coffee. A lot of times we don't have enough coffee up, up in the office, so I got to run downstairs and get it. It's a big thing, right? So I put my limit order in knowing, knowing that I have that custom, the lightning bolt's activated, right? You see that little lightning bolt here? It's an active ATM strategy. It's happening. So if I get filled in my absence, then that profit target and that stop loss is going to automatically go. So look for that lightning, you know it's going. All right, everybody with me? All right, so that's just, that, that's just the simplest thing you could think of, simple bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now, let's say that we have a multi-unit. Uh, let's edit this order, let's edit this custom. Let's say we wanted to do two contracts instead of one. And we wanted to have two different targets instead of one. So on target number one, I'm going to go way to the right and I'm going to see add. We'll click on the add button. 
now I have two levels of target I can set. So for the first one, let's make that should make sure that's a one target equals one. I'm going to have, I don't know, we'll have, we'll set the stop loss to six. We'll set the uh, profit target to six. And then for the second target, you could do a different stop loss, but I'm going to use the same stop loss, six, and profit will set it eight. So the idea here is you get in a position and then it will not only uh, uh, put a, <clears throat> put two different target prices in, but also cancel stops along the way. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And um, I'm going to go short this time. I'll sell it at the market. OK, so my first target, one, two, three, four, five, six ticks below our entry. Our second is eight ticks below our entry. And our stop is one, two, three, four, five, six up. Now, the idea here is, of course, it's not going to go my way. But if it went my way and I got filled on one of these units, right? I, I bought one back, I would still have a stop, but it would only be a one unit stop. It would take one of the stops off the table, right? Because um, I only have, I'd only have a short position at that point in time. Does that make sense? Okay, so alternatively, if I get stopped out, it cancels everything else. So I'm clear and free. Um, and I do have that stop filled noise. I don't know if you guys could hear it or not, but it's a stop filled. It's totally embarrassing sometimes. But in any event, um, that's how you do the multi-target. And, you know, you could do a three-unit trade. Let's do this on a micro NASDAQ, though, because I think we'll have a little bit more price action. I'm going to go. I have everything linked. My dome is linked. Remember, instrument link is orange. My market analyzer quote board link is orange. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that uh, micro NASDAQ contract. And it's going to change the trading ladder. Now, all these things, all of my, all of my setups here are still, that are still good. They're still memorized, right? I saved them. So it doesn't matter. If I change markets, if I go to the chart, I'll still have all of those options available. So let's take it to the next level here. Let's go ahead um, and customize it again. And let's add a three unit. Let's go quantity three. Why not? This is a micro NASDAQ. This is good. I'm going to add another target, target three. And I'm going to change some of these parameters because this does bounce around a lot. So I'm going to make the stop loss 20 for all three. I'm going to make them the same. You don't have to. We'll make the profit 20 uh, for the first unit, the profit 25 for the second unit, the profit 30 for the third unit. So now I got three units. Uh, everything looks good. No stop strategies yet. No stop strategies yet. We'll get to that. We're going to add some stop strategies. But right now, this is just a three unit multi uh, target bracket. Hit OK. And you can see my quantities are set to three, which is good. Let's pick a direction here. I'm going to pick a long direction. It looks like things are going good. Um, let's see if I can get this uh, limit order in the books and see if we can get a fill. All right, we got a fill. Here's our three different profit targets. There's my stop loss right down there. And there's my average price right here. And again, the idea is whatever starts getting hit first, everything else either clears out or gets reduced. So uh, let's be patient and see how this goes. Okay, stopped out. Targets are gone. Let's keep doing it long until we get one to uh, go cooperate. And of course, stop right away. All right, let's try it again. We'll go down to the VWAP. That's my purple line here I have on here as well. Or maybe I should go with the trend again and see what's going on with this candle. This candle's hovering right around the point of control. It's not really uh, cooperating, but VWAP might be our friend here, right? So let's just kind of let it break down past the VWAP a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and try to get long again. Because what I want to demonstrate is once uh, the market rallies up to our first profit target, then this three lot stop will turn to a two lot stop. That's the automation part of it. And again, we're, this uh, is probably not going to cooperate with this, but we could be patient. So not only does it clean up positions that are unnecessary, it also provides uh, a parity to your open position, right? So we're long three right now with the idea that, hey, maybe we can get, let's try to accelerate that a little bit. I just go, I just go, I just move that first target down a little bit. You could really do that pretty easily with the dome by clicking and clicking. All right. So I picked the wrong direction, but I think you guys are getting the idea, right? So let's do it again. Let's go, let's go, let's go short this time. And this will be funny if we get stepped out. I'm going to put this, I'm going to move this above VWAP. I'm going to go ahead and change auto, auto center off. I'm going to put this above VWAP. And then let's take a peek at where our targets are. 
So when you're coming up with your parameters, though, that's the tricky part, right? It's like how to come up with parameters that um, uh, are realistic with respect to the market you're trading, right? This is the micro NASDAQ. It's very choppy, as you can see. So I got one of the targets filled. And finally, we got to stop at two. And uh, that, that changed exactly how I wanted it. If we get the next target down here, my, our second target, and I'll go ahead and speed that up a little bit, um, then our stop went to one. So it's never out of, a, out of whack. It's always, it's always uh, in sync with each other. And then we got the last third unit to, to go. And again, you could just kind of write it out or do whatever you want, but that's um, how you manage that uh, three target trade idea, right? It's fit. You can be very nimble, um, very patient on some markets. Some markets you're not going to be quite so patient at. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that close button. And uh, I just, I just uh, closed everything out. Remember, when you hit the close button, two things happen. One, it flat, the, your position is flattened at the market, best available price, and all of your working orders are canceled also. Those are the two different things that happen when you hit that close button. And you can see I've got nothing anywhere, right? Okay, so this is the hardest thing to kind of comprehend is the way that the, uh, um, the trailing stops work. But once you get it, you're going to be like, wow, this is awesome. All right, so... Let's let's stay well. We could stay with the three unit trade if we wanted to, um, but let's make it simple. Let's just do a one unit for now. I'm going to remove the first two units. I'm going to make my stop loss uh, a little bit bigger. I'm going to make my profit target a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to I'm going to click on a, a stop strategy here where it says none. I'm going to click on it, and then it gives me a drop down menu, custom or none. I'm going to click on custom. Now, here's another box that doesn't look like it does an awful lot, but it does. Um, as an example, there's a uh, auto break even function. And let's talk about that first, since we're just doing a one unit trade idea. Um, let's just let's stick with that uh, auto profit idea. So what auto break even does is you could set a certain level, a certain price uh, distance from your actual uh, position for when you want the stop to jump to break even, which was your entry point, right? That's your gross break, break even. So let's set this at 15. And then plus, you could do plus or minus, but I'm gonna leave that at zero for now. So it's just, we get to 15 uh, on, the, on the profit side, then our stop is gonna jump to break even. What this plus would do is like, oh, I want it to be one tick above break even. So as an example, so you change it to one. Right, the step stuff down here we're gonna do next, so don't worry about that. This is just auto break even. I'm gonna hit okay. And I wanna change this down to one, one contract. Okay, so we have 30 and 40 is my stop and my profit target. And then we have 15 set at, at the level where we want it to break. Now, the only thing we need to do is pick a direction, right? And it looks like everything's selling off a little bit, so I'm gonna try to sell one unit at uh, as soon as I can. See if we can get a little bit of, a little bit. Let me get it a little tighter. 47, see if we can get a fill. Yes. All right. So stop is way up here. Profit target's way down here. So the idea is once we get, there we go. So we got 15 ticks our way and our stop moved from where it was to where it is plus one, right? That's what we said. We wanted it plus one. So that's how the break even wor part works. Now the OCO is still, our target got filled, so our stop got uh, canceled. Let's do that again, just in case that was a little too fast for everybody, because it was too fast for me, for sure. I'll leave the parameters the same. Again, one unit break even trade. Let's try to sell the 40s. Okay, so 15 ticks our way. We're going to see that stop jump to 39 and three quarters. Let's see if we can get 15 ticks our way. And I use 15 in this market because look at how bouncy it is. It's, you know, it, it's, it's literally, if you make it too tight, then you're going to get stopped out immediately. If I would make it five, it would jump to break even uh, plus one and five ticks and most likely get stopped out right away. So be careful how you set your parameters uh, when you're trading the micro NASDAQ in particular. Other markets will behave differently because they don't move as fast. All right. So where's my stop? My stop's up here. It's not moving until I get that directional, that, that, that bias in my favor. And then it'll, then it'll jump once. 
and look at that go. So we need to get 15, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We need to get down to 36.25. And the market just has to touch it. Once the market touches that price, one, one, one transaction, boom, we're here. And then the stop jumps, right? And then our, my profit target is still way out here. It's still in play. All right. And so that's kind of a, that's a single hop. You can call it single hop, break even strategy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually trail the stop. So it follows us down as the market uh, goes our way or follows us up as the market goes our way, depending if we're short or we're long. So let's get down to that 25 number and see if we can make it happen. And again, I added it to plus one. Remember, plus one. You could add it to plus two, plus five, plus six, um, whatever you'd like for your jump. It doesn't have to be. There we go. So we just jumped, and you know we're break even plus tick now. So that's good. All right. So everything got stopped. So uh, let's go back to that custom level here. Boom. Um, and then on stop strategy we had a plus one, right? So I could have changed this to anything. I could change it to, I don't know, let's change this to uh, eight. Let's change our profit uh, trigger to 12. We'll make it tighter, we'll make it tighter. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna hit okay again. And so now we just gotta pick a direction for this demonstration. And it just looks pretty negative to me in this market at the top. So I'm gonna try to get short again. And so target's way down here. Stop its way up here, but remember we changed the distance. So, and it's already way against us. So we have to wait. Be patient, 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 because our custom we customized it so that it will uh, jump sooner than later. It's not going to go 15 anymore. So let's see. Let's be patient here. Let's see if that red candle lives up to its promise. Lives up to its promise. It's making me on this chart right here. Although the point of control is formidable on this particular chart. We'll just throw it in again if we get stopped out. Not a big deal. <sighs> While we're waiting, I hope everyone's having a glorious day today. Hopefully everybody had a glorious weekend this weekend. Uh, at the opening rain show, we had um, we had a good a good event. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going short here. We'll eventually get it. We'll eventually get it. Be patient. Come on. There we go. Ooh, didn't quite get it. Come on. There we go. All right. Now, remember, we're looking for what? 12 or 8. I can't remember. A little bit down, a little bit down, a little bit down. Now, we're going to jump. Um, we're going to jump five past that 48 level in a couple of ticks here. A couple more ticks. I think we went down to 12, right? So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And notice we got down to 12, our stop jumped five. So there's a little bit extra meat in the bone in that particular case. All right. So let's 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 um let's do a, a trailing stop, right? We're, we might have a hard time demonstrating it because um, we're kind of in the middle of the day and we're not trending anywhere, but we'll try it anyway. So I'm gonna do um, a Customization. I'm going to edit our, you know, our, our trail, and instead of doing this stuff up here for auto, I'm going to get rid of that uh, profit trigger and all that stuff. We're going to get rid of all that. I'm going to bring it down to, to as low as I can, low as I can, and now I'm going to click on this one step. I'm going to do this auto trail one step, right? And so a, a couple of things I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to change. Um, at what point do I want the trail to start? Well, I want it to start when we go a certain distance, right? When we go a certain distance. And remember, my profit target's at 40. So let's say this thing's, let's say we want to start at 20. If it goes 20 ticks our way, that's when I want to start it. But then where do I want to start, start, uh, start it, right? Do I want to start it one tick away from that profit? This is how far away from the profit trigger you want to put your stop. So if I were to make this 20, this would, once my profit target 20 points higher is hit, then the stop is going to go tw uh, 20 points below that to break even. 
right? If I wanted it to be a little bit more aggressive, I would say 25. Frequency one, that means every tick up, it will go. Uh, it, as we make a new high watermark after the 20 is achieved, then the stop will, will, will continue to rise by one. Does that make sense? So profit, here's my trigger. Here's when this whole shoot match starts. Where is it going to start? Well, it's going to start 25 ticks less than where my trigger is. And then how is it going to move? Well, as we make new high watermarks or low watermarks on a short trade, it's going to move up by one each time. So I'm going to hit OK. And we will hit OK. And now, of course, we're rallying here. So I'm going to go out of center, find my base, and go ahead and throw an order in. And again, this is a great market to demonstrate when, you're, when you catch the trend. So let's see if we can catch the trend and see the auto trail work. All right, we are long right now, one contract, and our stop is down where we had it. Our tar profit target's up where we had it. And if we get a little bit more move up, we're gonna start seeing a uh, jump on the trail. I might've made it too tight actually. Nope, okay, so it's trailing 25. Remember when 25 below the target. And now every time I make a new high water mark, it will go a uh, tick higher. And then eventually, eventually one of two things will happen. I'll either get stopped out or I'll get the profit target and then the stop will be canceled. Again, OCO order cancels order. Where's my target? Now you could change this too. You could, you could move your targets. You could move them in the middle of the game for sure. Um, we'll see. Okay, so stop fill profit target uh, is, is uh, Cancel. Now, what would I do different? I'm going to do something different now. Um, and I recognize that on my stop strategy, instead of being uh, 25, maybe I want to make it 15. So I'm going to edit this. And so instead of making it 25 away from the target, maybe I want to make it 15 away. So at least I lock in five ticks, right? So we're going to try that. Stop loss is 15 from the, pro the, the trigger uh, uh, value, right? So it's going to be which will be five ticks above your entry. Does that make sense? And this is just one step. You could step it twice. You could step it three times if you want. So, you know, again, I would recommend you practice in sim mode if you start stepping up stuff two and three times because you're going to have to set additional step levels as well, and it can get kind of tricky. All right, so... Let's do it. All right, we're going to pick a, we're going to pick a price... Let's get along at 63. Let's be patient here and see how this goes. And again, it doesn't matter what market you're doing this on. You could do it at any market. You could do it on the chart itself, the trading chart itself. Um, and then when we're done with this trade, I'll show you how to save it. It's pretty easy to save your strategies. So we're long there now. Market kind of hopefully bounces forward, bounces up like a Super Bowl, a little bit higher. We have our stop is already down here. It's already set. 30 ticks away. Profit target's 40 ticks away. And again, wow, this moves really fast, folks. Okay, sellers came back in. Let's try this in a slower marketplace. Slower marketplace. So I'm going to go back to my market analyzer and then we'll pick, we'll go back and pick the e mini SP and change everything around. All right, so e mini SP. Now, the other thing I want to do, because it is the E-mini e S&P, I want to edit some stuff. Stop loss of 30 would be extreme. Profit targeted 40 would be extreme. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit. We'll make this, I don't know, 10. And then we'll make this, um, we'll make the, pro these are ticks, remember. 10 ticks for stop loss. We'll make the profit target 25 ticks. And then when I go to, uh, when I want to get my stop strategy, uh, my, my strategy for steps, I want to do one step, right? and Let's, I don't know, we'll pick the profit trigger at 10 ticks. At 10 ticks, and we'll move our stop loss to five. So that when uh, the uh, market goes 10 ticks our way, uh, then the stop will jump. It will step, I think jump, step, same, same thing, five from our profit uh, trigger, and then the OCO will still be in effect. So let's do it. And I could save it as a template if I wanted to. Just click there and it'll save. And I'm going to hit OK. And there we have it. So again, we're at, all, we're at the highs here. I want to try to get short. And this is going to take a little bit longer too sometimes. Um, let's throw it in. See if we can get the 
86 evens and then it should look at us right now it's thinking did, did enough did enough volume trade at that price for us to get through there we go simulator did its job very well there's my stop one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ticks up and there is my target 20 ticks down i think it was 26 and now we're gonna now as this marketplace goes down to our predefined levels then the stop is going to jump. We, I think we set it at 10, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Market comes down here and it's going to jump five. One, two, three, four, five. Our stop will end up being right there at the uh, second standard deviation, first standard deviation of VWAP band. So we'll just leave it there for now and um, see how it goes. If this is unclear at any point, type, send a note to Ed. Ed'll shoot it over to me in the chat, and I can go over it again. I've been doing this from the short side a lot, but um, you know that's where I, where, I, where I think the action is. So we're gonna hang tight here for a little bit more. See if we get a little bit of a sell off here. Um, it is lunchtime; things are slowing down uh, as well. So so far, recovered. Adding a bracket around an open position. Uh, creating a simple bracket from the get-go, right? So no position, uh, adding it. Um, and doing a multi-target bracket. And uh, we did a break-even trade. And now we have uh, a situation where we have a trail associated with a simple bracket. So five more ticks to go, four more ticks to go. And then you should see that stop break five below our entry. So one, two, three, four, five. But we need to achieve another five on price before that activates. One, two, three, four, five, which would be right here. So here's our target. If the market gets down there during the life of this trade, then we should see a jump. If my math is correct and I counted correctly, so right now we're unched. Um, you can see our PL, our unrealized open, uh, and I'll call it gross PL, right? That's um, uh, does not include any slippage or commissions. Um, if our limit order is filled, then there won't be commission because by definition, we want what well, it could be positive, I guess, in a weird way, but it won't be. It would be in our price, right? Limit order, you're specifying price. A stop order, you're not specifying price. It just triggers as a market order the way I have it uh, placed on the chart, which means you could get slippage on a stop, either up or down uh, on a stop. So keep that in mind as well. But that PL we're talking about here is uh, it moves around in real time, mark to market. And I have it displayed in currencies right now. You could click here to display it in something else if you want. Percent, well, that would be weird. Um, and you know, pips, that's a few, that's a Forex thing or, um, you know, points that's a legitimate thing. Some people like points We're three quarters of a point. Remember in the E-mini S and P it trades in quarters, right? So it goes 25%, 50%, 75% in full point is a hundred percent. Um, or you click on it again and then it'll give you ticks. Some people like to see ticks. And then finally, dollars. We'll leave it at dollars right there uh, as we're kind of waiting to see if this thing uh, goes. The other market we could experiment in a little bit on some of these OCOs is crude oil. That moves around a little bit more also. So we'll think about changing markets here in a couple seconds. But let's hang tight. I have high hopes here. We're still, we got plenty of time. We have plenty of time. Again, we're trying to get that 4350 print so we could see uh, the market in action. If we don't get it in a couple of seconds, I'll move to a different market and we'll try to find something that moves a little bit, but not too much. So I'll leave my I'll leave my pointer right there on the Ninja Trader uh, Superdome. And, you know, I like to have it configured with a couple of columns on the right hand side. Um, P&L, again, same thing as you're seeing here, except at every single price point, right? At every single price point, you see this. And then volume, this is tick for tick, right? This is tick for tick volume profile. And you can see we're near the top of the day, top of the day being 45.88 and three quarters. We had 422 contracts traded at that price when we did uh, trade up there um, not too long ago. And um, you can see that the volume is filling out, getting bigger and bigger and bigger at lower price points here. 
creating a profile or a distribution of volume, we like to call it, um, distribution of volume, we like to call it. So we're trickling back down. Um, and everything's mimicked on the chart behind us right now. You can see that there's uh, my stop here. It's graphically represented in red on the actual chart. There's my target. And these are, are fungible, right? I mean, I, I don't know if fungible is the right word, but I could change an order on uh, the, um, the chart and it'll, you'll see it move on the trading ladder and vice versa. So these two things are synced up together pretty nicely. So that's uh, something else to consider. And you could also see a little flag here. I'm, you know, one, there's a one in there. It's a red square. It means I'm short one. And um, that gives you all the information you need. We're going to give this another 30 seconds. We'll just see if we could break through this lower VWAP band here, this upper VWAP band. This is, uh, I have it color coded for uh, my indicator. So I, I get to see where my VWAP line is on the actual ladder I scroll down there's the view app itself it's purple I color coded it that way on purpose so I can remember what I'm looking at uh, is in the heat of the in the heat of, heat of the battle as the day goes on right now all right so we're making we're inching our way back down here we're inching our way back down there um that's our target right there where my where my where my uh, pointer is and again, let's give it another, all right, I know I said this already, let's give it another 60 seconds. If not, we'll switch, we'll switch to another market that might be moving a little bit faster. And I'll keep custom one the same, right? I won't, I won't change custom one for the next market. So it should move a little bit better. And just glancing across the board here, it might be, um, maybe the Russell 2000 might be a market of consideration. So, 15 more seconds if we're not moving. What, how much time's left? We're like in the middle of a candle here. But I feel like it's going to break. It looks like it's breaking. Let's do a little technical analysis here on the side. Let me kind of squish this up a little bit. Because the last, tra last thing I want to show you is a multi-target break um, that trails all trails the stop. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> so we've got a couple more ticks to make it. I feel like we should be there. Right, so there's uh, each tick is worth twelve dollars and fifty cents. Right, each tick is worth twelve dollars and fifty cents. And um, I want to get one more tick. I think should get us to our ten. I think we set it at ten. It was so long ago. Hang on, Roma, sir. Of course, it doesn't want to cooperate. It does on the chart, though. I mean, if you could check out the chart right here, it's a pretty where it, this VWAP band is really act, doing its job. It's really acting like support right here. You can see uh, we touched it the previous candle. The previous candle, we wicked into it, but we didn't close in it. We didn't stay there. The previous candle didn't get close. The candle before that didn't get close. We broke out above at 12 o'clock. And then uh, the, the candle before that, you know, was the last time we really traded around that candle as well. All right, let's try this in different markets. It's not cooperating. I'm just going to close everything up and let's shoot over to the Russell 2000, see if that gives us a better experience. All right, Russell 2000 is here. Let's just recheck everything we have. We have stop profit set. We have our stop strategy set one step, five uh, profit targets. Let's make it tighter so we don't have to wait around forever. We'll, we'll make it uh, we'll make it six and then we'll tr we'll make our stop loss three away from that. So profit target again, this is the pre this is where we, where we want the trail to start and then it's going to start three uh, three ticks under this this trigger and it's going to tick up for up uh, one every every high water mark. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and uh, hit okay. well we'll make this a little bigger to give us some time. Make it a little bigger to give some time. And again, same thing. We'll try to get short. Stop is automatically there. We want a six ticks. So one, two, three, four, five, six ticks. And then a uh, couple more, a couple more, two more, one more. The Russell might be my new demonstration uh, marketplace if this all goes well. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to get a print down here at 76. And then the stop's going to go one, two, three to 71, one.
And Ed, if you're back there, I want you to hit sell a whole bunch of contracts here in the Russell 2000 to push this thing down. You know, just get the big account out and just boom, hit the sell at market button. And we will definitely get this, this achieved. One, two, three, four, five, six, right there, 76. There we go. So we hit it and the trail jumped. Now, as we make a new high water mark, it'll keep following it down. It'll keep following it down. Finally. Sorry, that took like five minutes to get there. Eventually, I'm going to get stopped out or my profit target's going to be achieved. But the trail's giving you another tick every time, uh, in this case, a low water mark is achieved, right? Every time we make another tick down, even though it could come back up and stop us out, it's, tra it's trailing the stop down. And then eventually, it's going to converge. And something's got to happen, right? We either have to get stopped out, which we just did, and the profit target is, is eliminated. So there's a case of a trail that kind of did what it was intended to do, and it was successful. So let's go ahead and do a let's let's do the next the next level of elevation really quickly. Is again, let's do it. Let's just max out with a three unit three unit um, a three unit trade strategy. I'm going to add three different targets, right? So we'll do profit target. I don't know. We'll make, we'll make it 25 still is good. We'll make it 30. We'll make it 35. So this, these are my, these are my targets, right? My stop loss is the same. You can make them different, but I made these stop losses all the same for all three units. And then I got to make this first unit a one, of course. Now I'm going to go to the custom uh, stop strategy. I'm going to look at the first one. I have one step three and six. Let's make them all the same just to make it easier. And then here I'm going to click on custom for the second one in one step, three and six, hit OK. And then for the last one, one step, three. And again, you could make these different, but I'm going to make them the same. So the profit uh, target or trigger, you could call it, is six ticks away from our entry. It's going to jump one step. It's going to stop or jump and stop three ticks underneath it for all three units. But my, my targets are going to be scaled. Right. And let's make these a little bit more reasonable so we can see them. Let's go 15, uh, 18, 21. OK, so I'm going to hit the OK button and look at the chart. I still like trading from the, salt, the short side here. So let's just throw an order in and be patient. Notice it's a three lot because it's a three unit trade strategy. And I threw in the limit order is in. We're trying to sell three, it's 78 even. I could change it. I could cancel and replace this order to you know, a different price and the instructions are still valid. So that's the cool thing about it. Let me chase it. I'm going to chase it a little bit. There is a chase feature too we could talk about. Um, all right. So stop. Profit target's all in. I'm looking for six, right? I'm looking for six. Um, I'm short at 77.8. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we'll get the stop to jump to one, two, three, and then it should follow tick for tick on the way down. And hopefully, there we go. Let's hopefully a little bit further up. <clears throat> Got stopped up, but you saw it jump, right? So that's how it works, actually. So experiment with that um, all you want. Let's go to uh, one more thing I want to show you. And I don't know if I'm a fan of this or not, but we're gonna. I'm going to show you anyway. We're going to custom. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to expand the box a little bit, this more button. We have a thing called reverse it stop and reverse it target. So um, I don't know if I'm a fan of this, to be honest with you, but um, let's try it. I'm going to, we're going to go back to the micro NASDAQ because we'll be able to see this happen quickly uh, there. I'm going to do a simple bracket, uh, 10 and 10 at the top, and we'll reverse it target. So in other words, uh, I'll be long one contract. And then if we hit our profit, it will sell two, creating a short position. And it will, you know, it will, it will reverse at the target. And that's what will happen. So let's go ahead and try it. And I want to change the market to, let's go back to the NASI. And now we've got to pick a direction again. I'm going to pick short again. So one order in. And this should be fast, folks. This will be fast. Before you get filled. Come on. Here we go. Almost. Nope. Come on. Don't you share super dome? There we go. All right. Our target. See, it has a two there. If we get filled, 
it's, it's going to reverse. And now my now my target's up here. There's a two. So it's kind of playing ping pong back and forth like that. Um, and you could always say close anytime you want. Um, I, it's obvious why I'm not a fan because there's no, you know, you're not really using, unless you're in a tight trend channel, maybe that's a good way to use this feature now that I think about it. If you're in a tight, if you're in a tight uh, trade channel, let's see if I could find a, a market that might, might be there right now. Um, this is another way the strategy might be a good one. Oh my God. I'm like way over time already, aren't I? That's all right. All right. Hang in there, man. Lunch is around the corner. Let's go to a uh, 10 year note. See what that's looking like. Okay. So let's use, um, this is a trending channel too. This didn't work out the way I thought. All right. Let's go to copper, Dr. Copper. See if that's any different. So not really. Um, this is all trend, but I'm going to, I'm going to draw uh, an area of support and an area of resistance with the rectangle. So in this case, what I would say is on that reverse feature is like, all right, so as the market approaches the bottom of the, re of the rectangle, I want to go long. As it approaches the top of the rectangle, I want to go short. And I want that oscillation to continue uh, as long as we're in that channel. So that's, a, that's, that's an example of maybe an okay th thing to do with that particular trade functionality. So I don't want to talk bad about it. Um, but be careful. I mean, in a market like NASDAQ, when it, when it moves around that much, a lot of times you eventually get a breakout and you could kind of get hurt, do some damage to that as well. Um, and let me just check, see if I have anything else here up my sleeve. Um, we have a chase feature, I, something else, again, I'm not really crazy about. Um, and you don't even need a bracket for the chase feature, as I recall. Let's double check, make sure I'm right. Um, so no bracket, really. One tick. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, chase. It says, please enter a value. I don't know, we'll do five. So what this does is it moves it moves the target. You're chasing the target, right? You're chasing. I don't want to, I want just chase, not chase, not target chase. This chase, and, it, and literally it will change your target as the market goes away from you. So again, it's something you you know you could experiment with uh, for sure. But I'm gonna hit OK, and we'll just throw this in uh, again. We'll do a, I don't know, do the Russell seems to be the market that likes me the most. We'll go to the Russell 2000. Uh, again, we'll do it on the long side. So let's say my my uh, I don't know. We'll put it here at 67 at 1967. As the market goes away from me, you could see how my uh, limit order uh, chased the market. And it moved it up three ticks really quickly. I don't know if you saw it or not, but it chases it. It brings it up. So in a volatile market, when you have a lot of really tick by tick uh, uh, volatility going on right there, you know, and you're, you know, it does. It's not so important to you that you actually um, end up. And you know, it did pick up my one lot stop. Look at that. And um, it's not so important whether you get filled at a seventy one one, seventy seven even, or seventy uh, six ninety six. You know, because your area of support is there, then that's an okay way to go as well. So anyway, just thought it's related. All right, um, we covered most of the stuff that we want to cover. Again, let me emphasize: all these trades we made were just to show the functionality of it, um, and not to uh, uh, for no other reason. That's number one. Number two, as you get into more of some of the advanced functionality, because there's a lot of it, and you could you could see from this little box, how many different permutations I haven't even covered yet. I haven't covered yet. Um, practice, practice in SIM mode. As a matter of fact, if you have a live account and a SIM account, um, you could do a shadow strategy where um, your, your shadow strategy would work in a simulated account uh, and not your live account um, during, you know, while you're trading live. So that's another whole feature here. And there's a couple of these boxes I haven't, even, I didn't touch at all. You know, reverse its stop is another thing, which is the same thing as reverse its target. Um, I'm less of a fan of reserve, uh, uh, reverse, <laughs> reverse its stop. Uh, it just means your stop is in the wrong spot. But anyway, that's just me. Um, having said all that, we covered a lot of ground. It gets very complicated, uh, but it's intuitive, right? The, the biggest thing to get your head around is when you are doing your, um, your steps, right? That this profit trigger is where it's not your profit target for your trade, but it's how it's where you want to start your jump on your trail. And then the stop loss is how far below your profit trigger. 
it is where, where your jump starts and then you go tick, tick for tick. Once you get that down, you, everything else is, is pretty, it's very intuitive and very easy. All right, folks. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, being here with me today. We will be live at bars closing with uh, the incomparable Tom Schneider uh, CMT tomorrow traders workshop, 12, uh, 12 o'clock. And then Wednesday, um, see the futures. I have a great guest, uh, just Steve and Jonathan. It's Steve, the, see the futures. First time guest. Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Anthony Cordell is back with Tom Schneider uh, at Develop Your Edge. And then Friday, Tom is doing another, uh, what I think are probably the best streaming shows out there, Technical Analysis Explained. So I think he's. I think the topic is RSI, Relative Strength Index. All right. Having said all that, folks, again, really thank you. Uh, appreciate you being here. Most important message, please be safe out there and be good to each other. Thanks. 